look at the covalent bonding in ethene, and we're going to explain it using the hybridization theory and the molecular orbital theory. Let us begin our lesson. In the first line, we have carbon in the ground state. So this is the electronic configuration of carbon in the ground state, meaning that all of these electrons, they're in their orbitals of the lowest possible energy. Remember that in the second energy level, we have three p orbitals. Right here, we only have two of them being occupied, so one of them is unoccupied. When carbon becomes excited by absorbing energy, one of the two s electrons now becomes um, excited and it leaves this atomic orbital and it goes to reside in the vacant 2p orbital. So now we move from carbon being in a divalent state with two unpaired electrons, carbon now being in a tetravalent state. So we have four unpaired electrons to form four covalent bonds. In ethene, we have a double bond. And a double bond is made from a pi bond and a sigma bond. So how is it that we create these um, pi bonds and sigma bonds? What happens is that this 2s orbital overlaps with two of the p orbitals in the second energy level, and an electron remains now in one of the p orbitals. So we have the s and two of these p merging together now to form sp2. So we have two p orbitals involved in this type of hybridization. So we have p2 and one s. One, two, three atomic orbitals are involved in this hybridization. So we need to create one, two, three hybridized atomic orbitals. So this is sp2, 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 and we have one unpaired electron in each of these. And guess what? We have at a slightly higher energy state the 2p z orbital still with that one unpaired electron that was promoted from the 2s. So how is it now that we can go ahead and create a double bond in EZ? I'm going to use that side of the board, so I'll just pause the video right now, go ahead and construct the diagram so I can easily explain it to you. So I've finished drawing the valence shell, um, the electrons in the valence shell for two different carbon atoms, but I looked over there and I realized that I left off the second energy level for the SP2. So I'm going to just put them in right now. So 2SP2, 2SP2, 2SP2. Alright, so we're good now. This is for one carbon atom involved in the bond. Say this is for carbon atom number one and this is one for two. So this is carbon number one. Alright? And this is for carbon number two. So let's look at what is happening. So the double bond here is formed from a single bond, and a, which is a sigma bond, and a pi bond. The sigma bond is when you have two, two of these sp2 hybridized atomic orbitals now overlapping. The pi bond is when you have the p orbitals now overlapping. I'm just calling them pz. You know what? Let us just change that. Let us assume it's a p. Let's remove the z. Because two pz orbitals can actually overlap to form a sigma bond. And we don't want any confusion right here, so let's just assume that it's one of the vacant p orbitals. So this now will overlap to form the pi bond. Right here, you see that the pi bond is formed from partial overlap of the p orbitals. So the pi bond actually lies above and below the plane. You realize we now have four unpaired electrons. So these unpaired electrons form these bonds with the hydrogen. Oh, carbon to hydrogen here, carbon to hydrogen here, carbon to hydrogen here, and carbon to hydrogen right here. So let's now put in the hydrogens. So one would be the one S for one hydrogen atom, the one S again for another hydrogen atom, and then up here we can see this is the one is in reverse spins. For hydrogen atom and another one now. For hydrogen atom. I'm going to get a different color marker to show you what is going on. So because I now need to create these four single bonds with the carbon and the hydrogen, 
So I'll say this is A, B, C, and D. This one would be, say, A. This one can be for B. This one can be for C. And this one can be for D. To be very clear about the bonding in ethene, in terms of the hybridization theory and the molecular orbital theory, let us just recap. Over here, we see where we have the 2s orbital merging with two of the 2p orbitals, and we form three new hybridized atomic orbitals called sp2 hybridized atomic orbitals. So, if we're supposed to represent the bond in ethene, this double bond right here is formed from a sigma bond and a pi bond. If two of these atomic orbitals, the sp2, that is, overlaps for two different carbon atoms, then we can say that these two will overlap now to form the sigma bond in the double bond. If the 2p orbitals overlap partially, then we form the pi bond in the double bond. These single bonds right here with the hydrogen, they're formed when the sp2 overlaps with the 1s for a hydrogen atom. So we have four of them. In terms of what this molecule looks like, let me show you two models. So this model now, of course, the carbon atom is here, another carbon atom is here, and then the hydrogens would be, see, at the end of it. So you can see it's a planar molecule. If you hold it like this, then the pi bond lies above and below the plane. All right, so it depends on the orientation that you hold it. So you can see it's a flat molecule. If you look at the other one now, where the carbon is represented by the black ball and the hydrogen, the white balls, you can see the double bond right here, lying above and below the plane. And this, of course, is a planar molecule. So remember, there's a sigma bond holding the two carbon atoms together, and the pi bond now, which would lie above and below the plane. And these are sigma bonds, and these sigma bonds are formed. So these sigma bonds right here are formed when the sp2 and 1x orbital overlap to form new bonding orbitals called sigma molecular orbitals. All right, so you've been learning science. This is see you with See you in the next video. Bye.